Good morning and welcome to Worship with the Congregation of the Presbyterian Church in New Brunswick for Palm Sunday in 2022, April 10th. We are so glad you can be here with us. As I said, today is Palm Sunday. It's the last Sunday in Lent, and it's a Sunday that celebrates a parade as we get ready for the beginning of Holy Week. And we start with this parade and we start off happy, but then we also remember as we go through where, where all of this is leading. So we will be talking about that, but we do begin with the parade. So for those of you who are still in Zoom world who got your Saturday emails and got in them your own paper palm branch to print out, I hope you've got that because so, you're going to want that. We're going to start off with our parade. Folks here have palm branches in their hands. We're going to make as much noise as we can because it was not a super organized thing. Now, we're going to talk about how it was a little bit organized. Jesus had a plan. But for everybody else, it was kind of a surprise. And so when you shout your hosannas in the highest, I'm going to invite everybody to go ahead and turn off, turn on, turn off their mutes and go ahead and shout hosanna in the highest and keep doing that when that comes up, which is a bunch of times. And it's going to sound messy on Zoom, and that's okay because it was messy. And we're not all necessarily going to say things at the same time, and that's okay because they didn't. It was all disorganized and noisy and m messy, and that was how it was supposed to be. So that's what we will remember as we do this, and all of God's people are celebrating as we come into the city of Jerusalem. That's what we're working on today. Um, everything you need for worship will show up on your screen if you're in Zoom world. On the left-hand side, if you're on a laptop or a desktop, down below probably if you're on the phone. Um, if you're here, you've got your bulletin and you can follow along. We invite you to read aloud the lines that are in bold print. Most of the time be muted, but as I said, for the hosannas at the beginning, we'll all have our mutes off, so don't worry about that. Um, if you're worshiping via Zoom, we encourage you to continue in your discipline of giving back to God, either by mailing your gifts to the Presbyterian Church in New Brunswick at 100 Livingston Avenue, New Brunswick, New Jersey, or if, you've, or if you want, using the Vanco Mobile Faith Engagement app, Vanco Mobile Faith Engagement, um, which you can get from the App Store for free. And you can put in Presbyterian Church in New Brunswick and you can give electronically and set that up very easily. Or if you live in the neighborhood drive by and drive by the church from time to time, when you drive by, stop by the door on Redmond Street, which is the one with a mail slot, put your gift in an envelope, write Presbyterian Church on it, and stick it in the, inside the door so that through the mail slot so that we can get it. All of those ways will get it to, you, to us. Children right now are encouraged not only to have their palms ready, but to have paper and pencil or crayons handy to draw during the sermon, and we will talk about that during the scripture, or right before the scripture, I should say, during worship, not the one at the very beginning. Now, one last thing for us to do to get ready for this parade. Sing back to me what I sing. Hosanna, Hosanna to Christ. That much. Hosanna, Hosanna to Christ. And there's a little more. Hosanna, Hosanna to Christ. Hosanna. Hosanna to Christ. Now we're going to stick those together. Ready? Hosanna. Hosanna to Christ. Hosanna. Hosanna to Christ. You've learned the whole song for the psalm procession. See? Easy as pie. So that'll, we'll sing that at the beginning, and Chris will be playing, so it'll be even easier. We'll sing it twice at the beginning of our procession time, though our procession is more imaginary because we're on Zoom and the camera doesn't, isn't going to go any place with us. I'm going to work out something for that for next year when we're pro hopefully a little more past COVID. And then we'll sing it twice at the end, and you'll see where that comes up. But now to get started, 
Chris is going to play through our gathering, our gathering song, and then we'll sing it a couple times. And then we'll begin worship and our parade. start worship I have to fix one thing because I let Barbara know that everybody should have two palms because when you have two palms together and you shake them they make noise everybody here like really good Presbyterians has made sure they will not make any noise and but today is Palm Sunday today we're supposed to make noise so we're gonna fix it so everybody makes noise give us just a minute You have a couple, okay, you have a couple. Good, we're set. Okay. Sam, you've got to be ready to make noise and be disruptive. Oh, I was going to say, we all know that Sam is never disruptive. Okay, he needs, he needs another one, Barbara. Sam needs a second one. He's being a good Presbyterian, and we're trying to stop that. Okay, now we're all set. Let us worship God. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Jesus headed straight up to Jerusalem. When he got near Bethphage and Bethany at the mountain called Olives, he sent off two of the disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find a, tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says anything or asks, what are you doing? Say, his master needs him. The two left and found it just as he said. As they were untying the colt, its owners said, what are you doing untying that colt? They said, his master needs him. They brought the colt to Jesus. Then throwing their coats on its back, they helped Jesus get on. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. And as he approached the city, they also put palm branches on the road. And where the road slopes down to, to, from the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of his disciples shouted praises to God because of all the mighty things they had seen. They said, blessings on the ruler who comes in the name of God, peace in heaven and glory in the godhest heavens. Chris will play through the refrain and then we'll all sing it twice.
palms ready. <clears throat> Swing wide the gates of righteousness. I will walk through and give thanks to God. Hosanna in the highest. Here is the gate of God. Everyone who does right is welcome. Hosanna in the highest. Thank God who answers me and saves me. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> the stones the builders tossed aside is now the most important stone. Hosanna in the highest. This is God's doing and it is amazing to us. Hosanna in the highest. This very day our God has acted. Let's celebrate and enjoy it. Hosanna in the highest. Help us to succeed. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who enters in God's name. From God's house we will bless you. Hosanna in the highest. God is our God who fills us with light. Celebrate. March with palm branches right up to the altar. Hosanna in the highest. You are my God and I thank you. You are my God and I lift high your praise. Some Pharisees from the crowd told him, Teacher, get your disciples under control. But he said, If they keep quiet, the stones would do it for them, shouting praise. And the stones on the road would burst out cheering. Chris is going to play through the hymn, and then we will all sing. <laughs>
beloved in Christ, I wish you grace, grace and peace to you many times over as you grow in your experience of God and Jesus our Lord. May God's peace be yours as well. Let us now hear God's way to peace and confess our sins and leave them at God's feet so that we may go forth free and forgiven. God spoke all these words. I am the one who is and ever shall be, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. God, we confess to you that we too often forget just who is God. We pray for your mercy, your forgiveness, your light. I'll sing first. God spoke all these words. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourselves any graven images. You shall not take the name of the creator, your God, in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. God, we confess letting so many things get between us and you. We pray for your mercy, your forgiveness, your light. God spoke all these words. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. God, we confess that we fail both our neighbors and ourselves. We pray for your mercy your forgiveness, your light. Forgive us, gracious God. Show us the way back into harmony with you and our world. 
Make your law live in us every day. Let us go forth in joy with your love alive in us. words that we may trust from the prophet Isaiah. Remember these things, O Jacob. Take it seriously, Israel, that you are my servant. I made you, shaped you. You're my servant. O Israel, I'll never forget you. God has wiped the slate of our wrongdoings. There is nothing left of our sins. Come back to me, says God. Come back. I've redeemed you. Believe this good news and live in peace. And listen to these words from the Apostle Paul. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. Beloved in Christ, the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you, let us greet one another in Christ's peace. young children before the Bible stories and sermon and all that good stuff that we do. And of course, if you're just out there in Zoom world and you feel young at heart and you want to listen to this part and have a piece of paper and pencil ready and draw during the sermon, you are more than welcome to because none of us can see you do it. And that's okay. And you don't even have to come and get up on the front step with the children because we're not still not doing that in COVID times. But let's get going. First of all, everybody, okay, here's our box. That word, that word that we put away at Transfiguration Sunday, it's still there in that box, and it's waiting. But next Sunday, it's coming out, and we're going to hear it a whole lot. So be ready for that word. It's still in there. But today, we've got this other story, and it feels kind of like we're coming in in the middle, doesn't it? And of course, we've been doing that for a while because way back at the beginning of Advent, the beginning of the end of November even, right after Thanksgiving, we started at the very beginning of the Gospel of Luke, and we've been going right through and kind of picking up each week where we left off. So we've been coming in in the middle of the story, but today it feels more like that because at the beginning of worship, we had the story that everybody would tell you, well, this is the story about Palm Sunday. They had the big parade. They waved their palms. They did all that good stuff. They shouted, Hosanna. And there's one of the first things I want you to know as we're getting ready for this Bible story. 
is that word, Hosanna, because it is a praise word. The Hebrews used it for praises. It shows up in the Psalms a lot for praises. But there's a funny thing about the word Hosanna. The word Hosanna, in addition to being a praise word, a happy word, it means save us, rescue us. So these people along the road who were shouting Hosanna to Jesus and praising him were also saying, save us, rescue us. And they probably didn't even know it because they had been using it as a praise word for so long that they'd forgotten that it had this other meaning. But there it was. So they're saying that, and that sort of makes sense because Everybody in the world is in trouble, and Jesus is coming to Jerusalem to save them. They just don't know it yet. They think this is a happy, happy, joy, joy time, and we're just having fun with a parade. Another thing for you to know, or to notice, did you notice in the story that Jesus said, you're going to go up to this next town, and there's going to be a colt waiting for you, a donkey tied up, just sitting there waiting waiting by the side of the road. That's pretty cool that he knew that. And then he said, "If you, when you start to take it, you're just going to take it. And if anybody comes and asks you anything about it, this is what you're going to tell them. And it's going to be okay. And that worked. Now you think about that. If that had been your donkey or your bicycle, And somebody came along, and they were just taking it. And you said, well, what are you doing? And they just said, oh, his master needs it, and he'll send it back later. Would you say, oh, yeah, cool, go ahead? (coughs) Probably not, huh? So there's a good chance that Jesus had made a plan, that this wasn't just, oh, it will be fun, and oh, I'm a little tired, I'd like to ride now. Jesus had made a plan. You see, Jesus and his friends coming from Jericho are going to go into the east gate of the city of Jerusalem. But Pilate, the, royal, the military governor, and all his Roman soldiers had come from Caesarea Philippi, which was where Pilate preferred to stay. Now, here's a cool thing I didn't know. The Latin word Caesarea, you know what it translates into in English? Jersey. And it's, it was down by, the, it was down by the, uh, the Mediterranean Sea. So they were, so Pilate preferred to hang out at the Jersey Shore. <laughs> we can all get that. We're Jersey, Jersey folks, we know, yeah, the shore can be a lot more fun than being in the city. Pilate didn't like it, like to be in Jerusalem, but during this week, When Passover was, every year he was in Jerusalem because sometimes people like to use this as a time to start trouble. So he had come from the Jersey Shore, from Caesarea, up to Jerusalem, and he had gone in the west gate of Jerusalem, the exact opposite. And when he came in, because he wanted everybody to be, he wanted everybody to know the Romans are here, you all better behave yourselves, he had made sure that All the soldiers were wearing their armor and it was all shined up and his armor was all shined up and he rode on a big white horse and they had their spears and they had their shields and they had flags and they looked really big and scary so that everybody in Jerusalem would say, oh, here comes the Romans, we better behave ourselves. That was the whole plan. So Jesus is coming in the exact opposite side in the exact opposite way. There are no soldiers, there are no spears, there's nothing big and shiny. They're all making noises and waving palm branches and having fun. Jesus is kind of saying, I'm the opposite of that other guy. So that's going on. And now we're going to pick up the story in a minute where it left off. We're going to find out that Jesus cried because he was worried about Jerusalem and he was worried about everybody else too. And then he, the very, he's going to get to Jerusalem, and the very first thing, he's going to go right to the temple, and he's going to cause trouble. He doesn't even say hello to anybody in Jerusalem before he causes trouble. So listen for the part where he causes trouble. He does something. If you went into the 
temple or if you went into your church and did this sort of thing, you'd get in all sorts of trouble. And Jesus just does it and then turns around and leaves. And then we're going to hear the part about what happens every day after that as he sits in that same temple where he caused trouble and he tells stories. And the stories are going to make certain people unhappy. And you're going to hear about that. So all of this stuff Jesus is doing, Jesus has a plan. And I want you to listen and think about how Jesus had a plan and Jesus knew he was going to get in trouble. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm telling you you should do something where you know you're going to get in trouble. Someday you may have to, but remember, Jesus is a grown-up by here. So wait until you're a grown-up. And sometimes, yeah, to do the right thing, you do something where you have to get in trouble. But Jesus has, got a, has planned it all out and doesn't do it just for fun. And Jesus does it because Jesus is going to give his life for us. And he knows that's what's going to happen. So I want you to listen to all of that carefully. And then during the sermon, you can draw pictures of what happens in the story or of how Jesus does things to stand up for us, to save us, or how we can do that for other people, sometimes when it's very scary. And of course, before we say we read scripture in church, we always say a prayer. And at the end of the prayer, we always say amen. So the grown-ups are going to help me say the prayer, and then at the end, I want you to say amen with us as loud as you can. Are you ready? Let's pray. Show us where to walk, O God. We give ourselves to you. Rescue us from danger. We run to you to hide us. Teach us to do your will, for you are our God. Let us be filled with your word, and we all say amen. Amen. Okay, listen now for a word from God as we continue in this story from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. As Jesus came near and saw the city, remember he's in this parade, they've all been waving and cheering. As Jesus came near and saw the city, he wept over it. If only you had recognized this day and everything that was good for you, but now you cannot see it. The time is coming when your enemies are going to bring up their heavy artillery and surround you, pressing in from every side. They'll smash you and your babies on the pavement. Not one stone will be left intact. All this because you didn't recognize and welcome God's personal visit. Going into the temple, he began to throw out everyone who had set up shop, selling everything and anything. He said, it is written in scripture, my house is a house of prayer. You have turned it into a hideout for crooks. From then on, he taught each day in the temple. The high priests, religion scholars, and the leaders of the people were trying their best to find a way to kill him. But with the people hanging on every word he spoke, they couldn't come up with anything. One day he was teaching the people in the temple, proclaiming the message. The high priests, religion scholars, and leaders confronted him and demanded, tell us by whose authority you act as you do. Who gave you such authority? Jesus answered, first, let me ask you a question. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? They pulled back into a huddle and whispered, if we say heaven, he'll ask us why we didn't believe him. But if we say it was purely human, the, this mob will stone us to death, for they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they replied that it, they did not know where it came from. Jesus said, then neither will I answer your question. Jesus told another parable to the people. A man planted a vineyard. He handed it over to farmhands and went off on a trip. He was gone a long time. 
But in the time that he, in time, after a while, he sent a servant back to the farmhands to collect the profits. But they beat up the servant and sent him off empty-handed. Next, the owner sent another servant. That one they also beat and insulted and sent away empty-handed. He tried a third time. They worked that servant over from head to foot and dumped him in the street. Then the owner of the vineyard said, I know what I'll do. I'll send my beloved son bound to respect my son. But when the farmhands saw him coming, they quickly put their heads together. This is our chance. This is the heir. Let's kill him and have it all to ourselves. They killed him and threw him over the fence. What do you think the owner of the vineyard will do? Right. He'll come and get rid of everyone. Then he'll assign the care of this vineyard to others. When they heard this, the people said, God forbid. But he looked them straight in the eyes and said, Then what is the meaning of the scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. The legal experts and chief priests wanted to arrest him right then because they knew that he had told this parable against them. But they feared the people. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. There is an episode of the original Star Trek series. And yes, I'm kind of secretly pleased that I figured out how to get a Star Trek illustration into a Palm Sunday sermon. There is an episode of the original Star Trek series where Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock have to stop an unstoppable computer that wants to cleanse planet Earth of everything illogical, like people. Now. The, the weapons on the Enterprise and the 400-plus member crew are useless, of course. And it all comes down to Kirk making a baffling argument to the machine until it overloads. Spock, emotionless and deadpan, observes, Your logic was impeccable, Captain. We are in grave danger. Like Kirk, Jesus, in our story, didn't seem to know quite, quite what he was doing. The Passover was coming, and Jerusalem was on high alert. The Roman military governor, who far preferred to stay down the shore at Caesarea Philippi, came up to the city with a legion of soldiers to keep order. They probably didn't take kindly to that parade Jesus had. And the temple authorities didn't like the noise a lot, and they didn't like the riot, certainly, nor were they thrilled by his teaching. Everything Jesus did seemed calculated to cause trouble, as indeed it was. And it worked. So he was in grave danger. Of course, that computer in the Star Trek episode wasn't evil. It was designed to do good, but it got corrupted. Likewise, neither the leaders in the temple nor Pilate, the governor, was truly evil. They were trying to keep people safe they were trying to keep order, following the rules they'd been given. But along the way, their plan got corrupted. Now, I won't say that there are no evil people in the world. 
no people who do things or seem to out of no out of no desire but greed or sadism we see the results of behavior like that each and every day and more of them on the news lately yes there is clearly evil that rises out of greed and hate and fear and awful stuff we see it on the streets of Bucha and Kiev and New York and New Brunswick. But there is greater evil that rises out of indifference, out of refusal to see, out of refusal to change, out of coming to believe that God can't do it without us, so we must be the most important. This well-meaning evil had to be drawn out and confronted. The principalities and powers of this world have to be challenged, have to be shown where they are getting things wrong. This, according to John Calvin, is part of why the church exists, to stand up to those principalities and powers. So Jesus carefully, calculatingly, came into Jerusalem doing and saying things that got him in trouble. And we are meant to do the same. Christ leads us into to danger. Christ leads us, calls us to stand up to the principalities and powers of this world and tell them that they are getting things wrong. And they aren't going to want to hear that. Christ calls us to do the right thing even when it might be politically or socially inconvenient for us. Christ calls us to do the right thing even when it means losing money or losing chances at jobs. Christ calls us to ride in and turn over people's tables, disrupt their lives, publicly call out their behavior, and to put our own lives on the line, not just euphemistically but literally, for what is right. Jesus knew what awaited him on Friday. And he did all of that anyway. Jesus knows what waits for us. And he weeps for us. But he calls us to do it anyway. Christ leads us into danger, knowing what comes on Friday. but we can also count on how Sunday begins. Let us pray. Write these words in our hearts, dear God, and help them to grow up in us the fruits of your spirit to the honor and praise of your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Chris is going to play through the hymn, and then we will all sing.
Ride on, ride on, God's love demands justice and peace lie in your hands. Evil and angel voices rhyme, you are the man and And I'd like to welcome everybody again to worship. I'm glad you're here. We're coming to the time where we'll share our joys and our concerns before we go into our prayers. So I invite you to go ahead and turn off your mutes so we can do that. And somebody can grab the microphone in here so folks here can share. While we're doing that, um, I'm just going to point out a few announcements. Session has a meeting today up at 1212 Livingston Avenue, the new, new, the new place, which we are going to be calling Peace Chapel. On Thursday, it's Maundy Thursday, so we will have worship at 7.30 here in the sanctuary at 100 Livingston Avenue, um, around the Lord's table, sharing and remembering the Last Supper. Um, and if you're joined by Zoom, it's the usual Zoom link, and it's there. On Friday, Good Friday, beginning at 12 o'clock, Good Friday worship will be available online, and from 12 o'clock through the rest of the day, in fact, the rest of the weekend, you can watch it whenever you have about 50 minutes to do that. Um, the link is there in the bulletin um, so that you can go directly to that and spend some time in worship and observing Good Friday. And then next Sunday, it's Easter. The word comes out of that box. And we will have worship at Easter dawn outdoors at Peace Chapel up at 1212 Livingston Avenue at 7 in the morning. And um, we will tell the Easter story. We'll sing a couple songs. We'll say prayers. And we'll have hot cross buns. So we look forward to that. A little breakfast will start our day. If the weather is bad, you can come anyway and we'll go inside. We will not all stand outside in the rain and get wet. There is no commandment about that, so we're not going to do it. Um, we'll be inside then, and you can still join us. Uh, and then at 9.30, our usual worship time, we'll have worship at our usual place here at 100 Livingston Avenue. Um, but it will be special festive worship for Easter Day. And so we hope that everybody can be here with us then. Lots of singing, lots of that word that we haven't been using. Lots of fun. And then the following Sunday, April 24th, we'll have worship again, of course. And after worship, the mission team has a special project for us. Folks have been getting brown paper bags and decorating them. That's the day to bring them. And we will all get together down the hall in the big room and we will pack them up with snacks. And those will get sent off to Elijah's Promise so that they use those snack bags for people so that during the day somebody can easily get a little snack when they need it. So um, that, that'll be that project in two weeks. In the meantime, we're still collecting tuna fish every Sunday, so you can bring that on down. And all the other things are going on, and you see things about that in here. Um, I will report on my grandson that he is still in the NICU, and it's going to be probably for a couple more weeks. Um, but he's getting bigger. He's gaining weight every day. He's not on oxygen anymore, except the oxygen that God gives him in the Albany air. And um, things are going right along. Um, now, I got something wrong. Last week, I told everybody he was in the hospital about two miles from the house. Well, it turns out they were pretty worried about my daughter-in-law's preeclampsia when... Um, she got sick that uh, two weeks ago. 
So they took her down to Albany Med. Now, up in Albany, Albany Med is like Robert Wood Johnson here. It's the great big, if they don't know what's going on, they send you to Albany Med because Albany, the doctors there wake up in the morning for solving some problem that's never been solved before. That's what they love to do. They've got all the fancy machines. So the good news is Calvin has been perfectly safe all this time. He's being cared for at one of the best places in the world. The bad news for mom and dad is it's about an hour back and forth from the house to the hospital, and they're taking turns doing that. Now, the other good news is that they both have jobs with very good family leave, and they get to be home from work until June to get everything taken care of. So that's good. So um, your continued prayers are very welcome for Calvin. Anybody else we need to especially pray for today? Um, special prayers for Itai. Um, I was in communication with her yesterday. Um, actually, she reached out to me. She's just feeling so sad because she misses her brother so much. And wow. it's been four months since he passed away. Um, but let's give her some extra love and prayers and send her our hugs. Okay. And let's be doing that. And we'll send her some right now. She is in, she is in worship this morning on Zoom. Carol. Uh, last Sunday after church, I went to visit Mimi and uh, she was in very good spirits. I even made her laugh a little bit and uh, I spent about 10 minutes with her. Uh, the children were with their mother, so Jaji and Yuri weren't there, but she said they're doing well. So I just want us to keep uh, the family, including her son, um, Rudy, in our prayers. Okay, so let's keep Mimi and Jaja and Yordi and Rudy all in our prayers. Sam? Yeah, prayers for my uncle Abner's uh, dad for recovery as the doctors are preparing to send him to rehab. Okay. Sam, what you're going to tell me his name again. Say it again. Waku. Waku. Thank yeah. you. I'll get it yet. Okay, Carol. Oh, Pastor James, I could not forget this. Tomorrow is my granddaughter Jaden's fifteenth birthday. Oh, wow. Ah. Well, so a happy birthday to Jaden, and yeah, we will give thanks for her life. She's the light of our lives. Um, she just had her, uh, finished her freshman year of cheerleading, and we're so proud of her because she got a letter. And she was one of three girls that got their letter this year. So just continued prayers for Jaden in her birthday tomorrow when the year's coming. Okay. So prayers for Jaden, and we give thanks for her. Anybody else? Hi, Martha. <laughs> Once again, um, something just jumped out at me from what we were spoken this morning. Um, it seems as parents, we're all looking to guidance. We're all trying to understand so many issues.
Thank you, Martha. And of course, we'll remember the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia who are drawn into this and all the surrounding countries. Anybody else? One last. Tom. Yes. How about now? Yes. No? yes okay. I'll start again. Prayers uh, of comfort for the, the family of a colleague of mine, Ed. Um, Ed and I worked together for over 41 years. Uh, he was still working in his 80s. Uh, he went into the hospital. He had uh, a number of lingering health issues, and he, he passed on. So I ask for prayers of comfort for uh, his uh, wife and uh, children and grandchildren and the whole family as they as they grieve his loss. Okay. So prayers for for Ed's family. Also, I'd ask prayers for the family of Tom Troger. Some of you may recognize that name because I'm sure it's attached to some hymns in our hymnal. Um, Tom is a has been a prominent hymn writer of the late 20th and early 21st century and was and taught preaching at Colgate Rochester Bexley Hall in Rochester New York and then in at Iliff in Denver Colorado and finally at Yale Divinity School in Connecticut and has been retired the last year or two and died quite unexpectedly last week so please keep his family in prayers. And Barbara? And speaking of Troger, um, um, a cousin of ours, Henry Troger IV, the son of Cousin Hank, passed away this past week, and his funeral is coming up this week. Um, and he died unexpectedly at, um, in his 60s. Um, but prayers for that family, uh, originally from New Brunswick. Uh, his name is Rusty Troger, who okay. passed away. Okay. So prayers for Rusty's family and Ed's family and Tom's family. Okay. You'll see in the, Chris is going to play in a moment and we will share our gifts. And then when you'll see that with the prayers, we start off singing three stanzas of the hymn, which I think you'll find are familiar. And then we'll say the prayer, and then we'll sing the final stanza. And then we'll say the Lord's Prayer. So um, just follow along in the bulletin and you will be fine. Oh, I take that back. We'll say the Lord's Prayer, then we'll sing the hymn. Okay, so listen to these words from the psalmist. Let us give thanks to God with all our being. In the company of the upright, let us honor God for the blessings and goodness that we have received. And let us with gladness present to God the tithes and offerings from our life and our labor.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Chris will play through the hymn and then we'll sing. palms and the parade, after the shouting and the shoving, after the hosannas and the hopefulness, we find ourselves following you through inequality and unrest, a world full of violence and brokenness, and we worry about what we can do. At least we can pray for this world and for all the people in it, especially those in places of conflict or danger this day, especially the people of Ukraine people of surrounding countries receiving refugees from Ukraine, worrying about when the war might spill over the borders, the people of Russia forced into the war. And we pray for those who lay down their lives, women and men laying down their lives for the safety of brothers and sisters and neighbors wherever they might be. And we pray for those who lead us, for our president and representatives, our governor and legislators, people who administer the affairs of our nation, our state, our cities and towns, and those who administer nations and states and cities and towns all around the world. For the president of Ukraine, the president of Russia, all of the leaders involved in this crisis, and all those others, that they might lead us into your truth, your freedom, and your peace. We are here to follow you. Give us strength for the next step. After the palms and the parade, after the shouting and the shoving, after the hosannas and the hopefulness, we find ourselves following you through disease and mortality a world full of struggle and despair, and we worry about what we can do. At least we can pray for those without jobs or homes or friends. We can pray for those who are ill or infirm, for Itai, Mimi, Jaja, Jordi, Rudy, Guatu, and Calvin. We can pray for those who mourn Ed's family, Rusty's family, Tom's family. We can give thanks for the gift of life and especially this week the gift of Jaden's life. We can pray for all those whose names we remember in our hearts and those whose names we don't know yet. We are here to follow you. Give us strength for the next step.
after the palms and the parade, after the shouting and the shoving, after the hosannas and the hopefulness, we find ourselves following you through apathy and hostility, a world full of anger and mistrust, and more than a little of it is our fault. And we worry about what we can do. But we know we need to pray for ourselves, called to be your holy church. For this congregation gathered here, for our sisters and brothers in and around New Brunswick, for churches of the Presbytery of the Coastlands and the Presbyterian Church USA, for colleges, seminaries, missions, and ministries, for everyone who proclaims your good news wherever they might be. We are here to follow you. Give us strength for the next step. After the palms and the parade, after the shouting and the shoving, after the hosannas and the hopefulness, we realize we are following you into trouble, following you to empty ourselves and die for the world, even as you emptied yourself and died for us. Give us strength to follow, out into the world, out into daily life, into pain and death. And what you have shown us that comes beyond death. Give us strength. Hear our prayers, even as your Son, our Savior, gave us words to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. watched Jesus and sent spies who pretended to be honest to fasten on something that he might say which could be used to hand him over to the authority and power of the governor. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all this day and always. And may all God's people say together, Amen. Amen.